So thank you to Arise, Labour Assembly Against Austerity and Claim the Future for inviting me to your fringe event hosted at the TUC conference. I want to begin by saying the government's plan for transport and investment and employment rights do offer opportunities. Kicking out the Tories from power after 14 years of brutal austerity is truly wonderful. But it does also pose serious questions regarding the consequences of Keir Starmer's position on Gaza, civil liberties, migrant rights, uh, his attacks on democracy and Labour Party members, and his support for big business and privatisation. The return of Blairism has been disturbing. And what I mean by that is an ideological commitment to austerity whilst following the US in pursuing imperialism abroad and at home, pandering to the right-wing narratives on migration, civil liberties, Islamophobia and social security. We have indeed seen it before. And likewise, the low turnout and vote share that Labour achieved, similar to 2019, is worrying. And I think it's an odd democratic system that creates two elections with similar vote shares, yet one provides a uh, victory to the Tories. And then five years later, there is a Labour landslide. Obviously for Labour, it is a welcome, desperately longed uh, for chance to break with the political consensus that has plagued the UK for so long. But I do worry. I do worry about where all those who just didn't vote turn to. And it's not just the far right rioting that we've seen here, but there is a rise in the far right all over Europe. What we are also seeing is that governments are cutting services and attacking working class communities while scapegoating migrants. All over, the political establishment are repeating the absurdity of one of the greatest political myths of modern times, that the way to defeat the bigoted far right is to pander to them. It has never worked. It is fundamentally wrong in principle and it is fundamentally wrong in practice. Politicians are participating in perpetuating the lie that migrants are the problem and are whipping up anxiety and fear. And with this comes the other political myth that poverty and austerity are inevitable. The politics of scarcity, as it always does, given that they are two sides of the same coin, the consequences are very dangerous. Now on the doorstep, during the election this year, it was very, very clear. People are desperate for change, real change, material change, socialism. And there is no doubt that people were angry and are angry with the status quo. I am proud of my record, whether calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, opposing austerity and privatisation, defending the NHS, calling out the housing crisis or speaking up for migrant rights, child poverty and the two child limit, and yes, the winter fuel payments as well. I'm very clear about what my role must be, who elected me, who I am there to represent. And I know that austerity always was and always will be a political choice. Now, if there is no money for our children to live free from poverty or for our older people, to enjoy their later years without hardship, then the money must be found. It could be raised, for example, by ensuring that big business and the wealthy pay their fair share. If the way our economy is run means that large-scale human suffering and wasted potential is unavoidable, then it is up to the government to change the way the economy is run. Historically, we were once told it was inevitable that women and working class people could not vote, or that people like me, a working class hijab wearing woman from East London, could not become an MP. But to quote the late Nelson Mandela, who struggled for social justice against racism and the far right continues to serve and inspire us today. It is only impossible until it is done. Solidarity.